because when you bless others, you're going to be blessed yourself. And that's extremely important in life Amen. because it's all about looking outward rather than looking inward. That's right. That's yeah. right. And that's something that took me a long time to learn. So, and I'm being honest about that. It just, you know, because for so many years when I ran my company, it was, uh, I tell people it's about the big three, me, myself, and I, and that's the way I looked at stuff. I mean, I wasn't selfish or anything, but I just, you know, hard, hard, if it's going to happen, it's going to be me, you know. Mm -hmm. And being slow between the years is nothing new for me. I've had a lifetime to get used to it. <laughs> All right, Jim, you got two minutes. You probably want to start getting ready to go live at the top of the hour. I'm ready, sir. I'm watching the thing right now. Just turn off the video, other videos and... Mm -hmm. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to day number two of Messages of Inspiration, Hope, and Support. During these days of the trouble and worrisome times and all, we are so thankful and so glad to have three lovely ladies with us today to be able to share some great topics that I know that you'd love to hear. I know I'm really anxious to hear them too. We are brought to you by speakerspathway.com. If you go to speakerspathway.com, we got some free complimentary gifts there. And one of the gifts that we have there comes from my co-founder of speakerspathway.com, Don McGrath. Don has the TEDx training. You can download his free, and I said free, meaning free, five-step easy guide to our kick-butt TEDx talk. We're also brought to you by Network Together. They're a community group out in uh, Phoenix, Arizona. They're they're a bunch of business people, entrepreneurs. They're helping build their community. And if you'd like to know more about them and what they do, get familiar with them, go to ntevents.net. And today, we're going to have three lovely ladies with us today. Uh, the third speaker will be Annette Gale. She's going to be talking to us about how to remove the spirit of fear which affects our health. That is a very needed topic for today. Andrea Roberts will be our second speaker how the good can help you manage anxiety and stress, the good in your life. And our first speaker that I'm going to be inviting to the virtual stage right now is Amber Griffiths. And let me turn Amber's uh, video on so you can see her. And unmute her there. And um, you, there she is. Good morning. And Amber, you're going, morning. To be sharing, you're going to be sharing with us about you are meant for more brand like it not act like it but brand like it we're just anxious to hear that so amber the stage is yours thank you have you ever been at a concert or maybe you wanted to be there and it wasn't just a flash in the pan one hit wonder kind of a band but it was actually someone you knew either was or was about to be legend have you ever been somewhere on the feeling of, I am in the presence of something remarkable comes over you, which is completely different than the, I wonder if this band could open a bar in Milwaukee next week kind of a feeling. You get a sense of depth and awareness that this is not your typical show, but rather this is something that's going to take up permanent residence in your memory and be a significant part of your own personal archives of holy cow moments. You just knew that this magic, this moment, this movement, this magnitude would stay with you forever. There was something a little different, something a little special. And it was more than just the music or the singer or the band. It was an undeniable feeling. It was an irrefutable experience and an energy so powerful. You just knew it was legend. 
And when you remember it, you can call it forth like it was yesterday. So let's do that now. I know you think I can't see you, but stand up wherever it is you are, stand up for just a minute. And we're going to collectively bring forth that memory, that emotion, that feeling. So let your arms drop down to your side a little bit. Again, I can see you. Stand up, let's do this together. And on the count of three for just a minute, uh, let's see your best air guitar. Let's see your best air keyboards, your mics, your vocals. Just take a minute and just bring that forward. Come on, there we go, there we go. Enjoy it. Wouldn't it be fun if just randomly across the country right now, there are people just standing at their desks just doing air guitar. Thank you so much for playing with me. Go ahead and take a seat, resume life as normal. You see, we each still understand. We have something like that at a gut level. It is so impactful. When it speaks to us, we feel it. We hear it at a very, at a very different level. And we intuitively get that when we play the air guitar, when we clap back from memory. I wanna share you, with you just a little bit about mine, but we'll keep it super brief. I had an opportunity to tour with my high school idols. I was super, super in love with and enamored with Eurasure. Um, I don't know if you remember them, 80s band, um, Andy Bell, synth pop, fabulous. They sang songs like Little Respect, uh, Drama, absolutely amazing. And I had a chance to tour with them, not as a raving fan, crazy fan, but actually play keyboards on stage with this band. If you want to know more about that, you can hit me up. We'll, we'll do a quick Facebook Live or we'll do a coffee chat or something to tell you about the whole story. But here's the thing. I had this amazing opportunity to go down that path to legend, and I didn't take it. I didn't, part of it, I don't think even I knew it was possible at the time. So I had this amazing experience that I will remember for the rest of my life, and no one else remembers me from it. If there had been some kind of an opportunity, if I had had someone there to show me the path, to show me how to do it, to show me that the next steps were there, that it was possible, my story would be completely different. So we all have moments like that, right? We all have moments where we could become legend. But ask yourself, are, how many of those moments are you taking? How many next right steps are you taking to become legend? And more to the point, are you set up to take even one? And not just for you, but for the people who really want to follow you. In this world, there are two kinds of people. There are those who choose to become legend. They are fully aware that they want to become legend. They are committed to it. They are willing to do anything they can to make it happen. They're eager for it. They're simultaneously uh, excited and maybe even a little bit desperate for it. They know that's where they're headed. They just need to know the next right steps for them to get there. And then the other group of people I like to call my reluctant legends. If I were to say to them, I can make you a legend, it really wouldn't thrill them in the same way. However, they are so passionate, so committed, and so devoted to a movement and a mission and a value that even if for now they think they are content to sit backstage and remain unknown, they are so committed to making sure that that movement and that mission and that value move forward and are heard around the world, they will become legends in that. Either of those are worthy, and both of those have very specific ways that they're brought out. So my only question to you today is, which one are you? Of all that you offer, of all the brand equity, the brand legacy, the logos, the fonts, the colors, your packaging, your pricing, all those things, the most profound proof that you deeply served your audience and you took them to a new place that they will never forget, a place where they went from onlookers to attendees to purchasers to raving fans and brought you the profit to prove it. The most profound proof that that impact is being made is when you head to legend. Whether you have a product, a service, or information, brave going there. Have the courage to create an experience that is memorable years later. Design a path 
that so deeply touches another human being that they experience you as legend. A presence so impactful that when experienced, even when you're not in the room, it is. Be that kind of person. Have that kind of brand and offer the kind of experience that when people are talking over coffee, when they are done settling, when they are ready to go to their next level of success, you are the only one top of mind. You are the only one that is recommended. And not because you're just the latest thing, not because you're the most recent workshop they went to or podcast they heard, but because the change and the life experience they experienced, they got from you touched them in all the right ways because they can't help but have you at the tip of their tongue. They can't help and they're excited to wave their cell phone light as an honor of you and the experience they got from you. The path to legend is there for everyone. We all get to choose to be on it or we choose to step off. But those who are on the path, either by calling or by choice, will have the impact of it to change someone's life, you are going to be legend for them. If you wanna have the kind of impact on your audience so that they remember you and their life is transformed through you, you get to be willing to do the things that take you out of the ordinary and move you into legend. I encourage you to get on that path. There's a something special about being able to walk that path with other people. You can totally do it alone. You can stumble, you can get discouraged, you can get a little distracted, you can get lost, but you don't have to. We can lock arms, everyone. No entrepreneur left behind, no rock star, no legend left behind. Everyone gets to lock arms and move forward. So let's talk really quickly about a couple of things that are going to impact you and impact your path to legend. First of all, think about it. If you are not getting your stuff seen in every corner of the world, you are doing to yourself what others have done for years. You are silencing your message. You're muting it. You are limiting your impact and you are dampening the opportunity for transformation for you and your ideal clients. You can't run a profitable business that way, let alone go on to legend. Lovingly, it's time to stop playing that role. It's time to stop playing at that level. We all tend to retreat to someplace safe and small when we feel challenged, when we are frightened, when we feel even threatened. And there is nothing quite so challenging and frightening as a massive upswing in success. And a massive upswing in success can also feel very frightening to those around us and it can threaten the small life that we've created. The less than full life you have keeps you and your message at a level of mediocrity that just doesn't cut it. Your soul, your vision, your mission are craving more. So stop playing that role. Stop playing small. Increase your visibility. And that doesn't mean go post 27 times. Increase your visibility. Make a bigger impact and create an experience. You were meant for more. You know it. You can feel it. Everything you create speaks to it. It's why you do the hard stuff. It's why you do the scary stuff. You and your message need to get out there in a way that is completely aligned. Because not only are you meant for more, but your clients are too. So when you play quiet, when you play safe, your clients don't get a chance to be your clients. They don't get permission and a way to be seen in a way that only you can create for them. So not only do you owe it to yourself, but you owe it to every person you're supposed to work with on the planet. Speaking of owing it to you, let's talk a little bit about money, shall we? I know, it's the elephant in the room. We're gonna talk about it. Getting on the path to legend is not just choosing a path of service, but when you are focused on championing, championing a message, that grabs hold and really sinks in. It is also about creating a financial profitability that is worthy of a sustainable movement. The truth is that whether you are committed to becoming a legend or you are reluctant to become so, when you are a legend, you are making serious money. 
even if that's not what drives you. It is necessary for you to move forward, to stay on the path and invite others to join you. Otherwise, you're just really popular seeing that one hit wonder alone in your car. When you choose to become legend, when you are showing up in that way, it is a win-win for you and your idol clients. Second, it's 2020 people. You have got to show up as legend. I love you big. I can already tell. I love you big, but you, <coughs> excuse me, you have got to quit being a branding mess. You've got a little bit of brand over here, a little bit of brand over there. You've got some color scheme going on. You got a low over here and too many think that that makes it okay. But I'm here to tell you, your brand is about a whole lot more than that. You get to understand that you get to play bigger than that. You get to play louder with purpose. To do that, you get to have the understanding that, that branding is more than color font logo. Commit to understanding that it's more than, than the occasional feel and the inconsistent showing up. It's understand that it's not only your content, but it's what your content says. It's how it shows up. And most importantly, it's how it leaves your audience feeling. And also you need to understand and remember that you are first and foremost, your greatest, most powerful, most memorable piece of content. Think about that for a minute. Let that soak in. You are your biggest piece of content. It is you that is creating that experience for people. You are the part that is memorable. That is how you move into becoming legend for them. So let's clean up the mess. Let's get all those pieces together. Let's focus on those key ingredients to make sure that you are unforgettable in a sea of other unforgettable people. Because if you don't get it together like this year, like now, the problem with that is that mess is going to exponentially build up. And this year with 12 billion new devices coming online, if your stuff doesn't have a very specific place to go, and it does, by the way, every piece of content you create and every piece of brand has a very specific place to go. And without it, it's just going to get drowned out and you may not get to play at the level you really want to play. I want to talk to you a little bit about collaboration. Take a minute to go through your Facebook friends, your LinkedIn connections, your Instagram followers, all those people you are connected to. I mean, really, really look at them. These are your other band members. There are people there you need to know, and there are people there you can't not get to know. There are people there who, without being able to understand who they are and connecting to their genius and having an opportunity to really dive in deep and work with them, you don't get to go where you want to go. And you may ask yourself, well, Amber, how do you know that? Because I do. It's my job to know. I've seen it. I know there's people in your world and people who are just outside of your world that without taking the time to really connect with them and understand their particular level of genius and working with them, you don't get to play at the level you want to play. So I challenge you. Take a minute when we're done here, when you're done listening to all these amazing speakers, go and look at yourself in the mirror and ask yourself, why am I not connecting with these people? Why am I not reaching out? Why am I not taking a moment to, because there's two kinds of people, right? You have your people that you already know and you have your people that you really need to get to know. Don't wait for the invitation. It's what legends do. Legends extend that invitation. Legends instigate that communication, that conversation, that connection. Collaborate, it's not just about being with a lot of people. It's about really connecting with the right people, the ones who understand where you want to go and realize that making a mini version of themselves doesn't cut it. I'm sure we've all had those coaches, those mentors, those gurus that are like, if, you, if I squish you into this little box, I'm going to squish in your corners and stuff your individuality and you will be just like me and that's how you get success. It doesn't work. It never has but especially now, it doesn't work that way. Collaborate with people who understand that you get to create your own path, create your own mission, and move that forward in a way that makes sense to you and your tribe and your community. Create that experience and brand like it was meant for more. This is a new time. 
and we totally get to be there for each other. We get to collaborate with each other, build each other up. And that is why I work with people who are committed to that. I'm tired of seeing good people with messages that matter, not get great results. I'm tired of seeing really amazing messages have this moment in the spotlight, this one moment on stage, and then nothing happens after that. It gets squandered. And sometimes it's because I don't even know it's possible. If you're ready for you, your mission, your message, your movement, and your fans to stop playing small, to stop being tripped up by the mess, to move past settling for a moment when you could be creating momentum, it's your time. There is a road to legend and there is a path to get you there. And there's a process that's defined and custom tailored to you, no matter which kind of legend you are, no matter which kind of legend you were destined to be. So let's unlock your legend status. Discover the exact next right steps, the exact right moment to get your message out there. Focus on the experience. Focus on creating something so remarkable that even when you are not in the room, people are talking about you in a way that they can't even sit still to do so. Take a moment, wave your cell phone light, connect with the other legends in your room. Connect with those other legends on your Facebook, on your LinkedIn, in your community, virtual or otherwise, and realize that this is our time. This world is full of legends. For those about to rock, I salute you. Thank you. Wow, Amber. I really hated to see you say thank you and you wind that up. That is a beautiful presentation that you gave because most importantly, you're telling people don't look inward, look outward and take inventory of yourself. And that is a wonderful wonderful thing to share with everyone and I want to thank you personally and I know Don does and everyone Speakers Pathway Coalition we thank you for being a, a great part of this great presentation that we're doing this great project the messages of inspiration hope and support Amber thank you so very very much thank you the pleasure's mine you bet have a wonderful day and ladies and gentlemen, uh, as we move on here, I want to very quickly give a quick shout out to all the men and women who are busy, still doing their jobs, taking care of us, or the pe people in law enforcement, fire department, the medical staff that respond to emergencies and things of this nature. We just need to be mindful of them, keep them in our minds and our hearts, and most importantly, just appreciate them and remember, remember them. And because we've got, you know, all of us, I guess we know someone that's uh, in that area there. Our next speaker today, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be Andrea Roberts. And let me get busy here and turn on her video and unmute her. But Andrea is going to be talking to us today about how the good can help you manage anxiety and stress. Are you there, Andrea? Yes, I am, Jim. Good, good. We're looking very forward to hearing your message. And please take the stage and deliver a great message for us. Well, hi, everyone. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Don. And thank you, Amber, for that great talk. It makes me want to get out my air guitar and play a little bit. And, you know, as she said, you know, you get to be your own legend. So you get to make that your own. All right, so let's get started here. Again, my name's Andrea, and today I'm gonna to talk to you about taking in the good as a way to manage anxiety and foster equanimity. So let's start by talking about our bodies. You know, our bodies are wired for survival. So when we're out and about in our days, you know, our brains, our nervous system, they're scanning for threat. You know, they're asking ourselves these questions. You know, is this person safe? Can I talk to this person? Is this environment okay? Do I need to be paying attention to sounds or, or there's something going on? So we call this a negativity bias in the brain, meaning that we're more likely to remember negative things and negative experiences because they're so important to our survival. So that's a good thing. But at the same time, it can also make it so when we have positive things going on, we 
we miss them. We let them go by. I mean, you can even think about the last time somebody did something nice for you. What did you a favor? I mean, it feels good, right? It's nice. But then we kind of forget about it. We let it go by. So now think about when somebody, when you had a negative experience, maybe somebody yelled at you, you got in trouble for something. Now you really remember that. I don't know about you, but you can remember it way back in your childhood about those moments. So yeah, so we want to, to balance out this tendency we have to focus on the negative and remember that more. So now I wanna talk about these three zones that we can find ourselves in throughout our day. I'm gonna start off by, we have this green zone, we have this yellow zone, and we have this red zone. So the green zone is the place where you're comfortable, where you feel safe. This yellow zone is where you start to kind of look around and wonder, hey, you know, what's going on here? You know, I have to be paying attention to something. And then the red zone is when it's alert, high alert. We call it that fight, flight, or freeze response. Your body just goes into that autonomic reactions. So then let's bring about uh, that idea of anxiety. You know, so anxiety is when you start to wonder, hey, what's going on around here? Something, something's happening that I need to pay attention to. So let's take a moment then and notice what happens in your body when you, you start to experience that yellow zone. And you, know, you can call it anxiety or use your own example. So for me, for example, as I even just think about, oh, what's going on? I have to pay attention. I can notice even my hands start to tense up, right? My shoulders, I start to hold them up. And if I pay attention to my chest, my heart rate, my heart starts to pound. Then you can even notice your breath and your breathing changes. You can, your breathing can start to, to speed up really shallow and fast, or you can even begin to hold your breath. And for a real interesting one, also notice what's going on in your face. When you're startled, when you're starting to look around, it's like your facial expressions freeze in your face, especially that upper zone right here. I mean, my eyes widen and I lose that expressivity in my cheeks, my mouth, even the muscles around the eyes. So there's all these things that happen once we start to enter that yellow zone, and especially that red zone. So we want to be most we want to spend most of our time on this green zone so let's talk about that a little bit maybe take you out of that yellow and red zone experience back into the that green zone so yeah that's where we feel comfortable that's really where we can connect with other people so we feel safe we're okay we don't have to spend so much energy scanning our environment wondering hey is this person going to take advantage of me we can just relax and be ourselves more and that affects our bodies too. Our bodies are more relaxed. It takes less energy to be ourselves. We're happier people. We, we're more fun to be with. You know, we can laugh, we can make jokes, we can play. And so let's talk then about this practice of taking in the good as a way to help us stay in that green zone more and even help us shift back towards that green zone when we start to, to feel that anxiety creeping up, that, that yellow or red zone even. Uh, so I'm gonna lead you right now through, through a three to five minute practice of, of taking in the good so you get to experience it for yourself. And just so you know, this practice is inspired by the work of Dr. Rick Hansen. And you can Google him, he has some great information out there. So here, to get started, now get comfortable wherever you are. You know, wiggle yourself in the chair. Notice yourself sitting wherever you are. Notice your feet on the floor. And begin to notice your breath and your breathing. It's such a gateway to notice your body is your breath. So notice that breathing. Notice yourself inhale and exhaling. So that again, inhale and exhale. So now I want you to bring to mind something that made you smile today, maybe even fills you with gratitude. It can be something simple, like getting to drink a cup of warm tea in the morning, 
So really get to hold that warm cup between your hands, allowing that warmth to seep into your fingertips, warming up your hands, feeling that steam warming up your cheeks, even getting to smell the aroma, getting to take that first sip and savoring that experience. So whatever it is for you today, just pause and take that moment in. Really enrich it, expand it with your senses. So take in the sights, the smells, the sounds, the sensations even. And as you inhale, invite all those good sensations, those good feelings inside of you, allowing yourself to be filled up from the inside. And then as you exhale, invite those good feelings to sink deeper into you, even sinking into your bones, your muscles, your cells, even getting to form part of the very fiber of who you are. So you get to have this rich and wonderful experience and you get to take it with you, allowing it to form a part of you. And as a reminder, just because we have these negative things that happen in our lives that are there, they don't negate or cancel out the positives that are there and available to us every day. Sometimes all it takes is that moment to pause and take that good moment in. So I want you to just stay with that for a moment. Stay with that experience. Notice how your body feels now. Maybe your heart's beating a little bit easier or your breathing feels better. So that's what we call that little experience of taking in the good. And maybe you can feel yourself be in that green zone more and you get to, to experience what that's like to feel relaxed, to take that positive moment in. And you can start thinking about how you can incorporate that into your, your daily life and how useful it can be. So here, let's talk about uh, you know, this equanimity then. You know, in life we have these these ups and downs. You know, we can call it a roller coaster ride, right? We have, you know, the the hardships, the pains, the losses, the disappointments. You know, those are those exist. They're real, right? And then, but we also have these positive ones. You know, like pausing to to enjoy a warm cup of tea or coffee, or you know, people being kind, and life is still happening around you. So. So equanimity and fostering equanimity is, you know, you have these ups and downs, you have these, this roller coaster ride, and it's being able to stay in that green zone a little bit longer as you experience that, those ups and downs. So there's a really benefit to that. So then let's talk next about how to make this a practice. You can say, Andrea, I like this, but what do I do with this? How do I, I make it more part of my life? Because I don't want to live, stay in this yellow zone all the time and, and be frantic or feel overwhelmed, feel that anxiety, being asking myself, you know, am I okay? Is this okay? You know, that takes its toll on you. I like this experience of being at ease, being able to have somebody hug me and feel like they're there for me. Because if I'm in that yellow zone or that red zone, my brain is thinking, hey, is this person okay? I'm not so sure. It's hard to relax and take that in. So then let's talk about building a practice out of this. I think it's easier than you realize. So one way that's the simplest way is to, to do it with whatever you're doing. I use the example of enjoying that warm cup of coffee or tea in the morning. You know, you can be stepping outside to get into your car. So instead of rushing in and opening the car and jumping out and you know, doing your errand, you know, pause, just stand there for a moment. You know, look around you. You notice something. Maybe you notice a squirrel or a bird. And just pause and take that in. I mean, you just notice the air on your skin or the sun shining on your face and warming up your skin. 
and then just go about your day. That's all it is. Another one could be right before bed. So you're laying in bed, getting ready to fall asleep. And just think about an enjoyable moment you had that day. Maybe you got to laugh with somebody. Maybe you got to enjoy a, a warm hug or a walk or shared a meal together. So whatever, or even it could be a memory. So whatever it is, just relive that positive experience in your mind, really letting it sink in with, into your body as well, and then drift off to sleep. So it really is that simple. You can use that, that ability we have as humans to direct our attention. And by spending that extra time focusing on the positive, you invite that experience in and you're allowing it to, to stay with you for longer. And so then over time, you'll find that maybe you start to experience that anxiety, you start to get into this, this yellow zone and you just automatically start to pause and notice something positive and slowly guiding yourself back to that green space. So try it and I wish you well and I look forward to hearing how it goes for you. So I wanna give a shout out to, to Don and Jim and wrapping up here. And I wanna end with, with some loving kindness sayings. So settle into your, your seat here and just take the words in. There's nothing you have to do. Oh, so may you be safe, may you be happy, may you be filled with peace. So thank you, everybody. I'll pass it over to you, Jim. Wow, as I was sitting there listening to you share your information with everyone, it just amazes me how, you know, this can be, then this should be a lifestyle for everyone, just to slow down and kind of like smell the rose, roses and and uh, it's really something that's a very achievable if people work at it. Isn't that correct? Yes, it's very simple. It takes like 30 seconds a minute. And the more you do it, the easier it is. Make it a habit, in other words. Yeah. huh? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Pardon me. But I just want to personally uh, thank you so very much for the information you shared, because I know that there's a lot of people going to see this uh, either live or by video on the replay. But bottom line is, you're going to be able to help them just shut off the noise inside and calm down and relax and don't get all revved up the way some folks do, as I like to say. But uh, Andrea, thank you so very, very much for being with us today. And thank you also very much for volunteering, just raising your hand says, hey, I'll be more than happy to share my message with, with people out there. And my, my, I can see that by your mission, you just want to touch people's lives and change their lives. And by the way, uh, what is your uh, web address so people can get in touch with you? Oh, it's um, yogabilingue.com. So I'm bilingual. I also offer these practices in Spanish and English. So, and you hmm. can yeah, find me online and also on YouTube as well. And I have okay. some of these recordings up there too. Okay. If someone wants to get in touch with you, your email address is... Andrea at yogabilingue.com. Okay. Well, listen, thank you again. We really appreciate it. I hope you have a wonderful day and we really appreciate you being here. Have a All good right, my day. My pleasure. Take care, Jim. Bye-bye. Wow. That was really a powerful message that she shared with us today. And it's really uh, amazing for us to be with her today. I'm trying to get my, do all the things here behind the scenes. Excuse me a minute, ladies and gentlemen, I get this done. There we go. And uh, we're going to be talking next with uh, Amber. And before I do, though, ladies and gentlemen, there's something I'd like to share with you. Um, here at Speakers Pathway Coalition, we're the group that put this together. We are so happy to pay it forward and help people. If there's anything that we can do to help you in, in, in your career or your business, please let us know because one example that we have in our at speakerspathway.com, our complimentary gifts, Preston Martelli, one of our executive train directors, is offering his complimentary brand audit, which includes 90 action steps to get you to your next level. 
That's a free complimentary gift. Just go to speakerspathway.com. We're also working together with Network Together out in Phoenix, Arizona. They build businesses and networking relationships and fellowships between entrepreneurs. And this is at the community grassroots level because now is the time for all of us in, in our communities to come together and work together. So if you'd like to know more about them and what they're doing, go to ntevents.net. And Annette Gale is going to be our third speaker today. And I was, we were visiting with Annette before the show began, and she's going to be talking to us about how to remove the spirit of fear, which will affect our health. And ladies and gentlemen, that is so true. Let me cut and let me cut her video on here. And okay, there she is. Let me stop the other video here right quick on Andrea. I don't know why it's not switching over automatically, but um, let me see here. There we go. Hey, Annette, there you are. <laughs> Forgive me a little bit because I've got all these things I've got to, all these little buttons and things I got to push while I'm talking too. So we're so glad to have you with us today. And you're going to be, again, talking with us about how to remove the spirit of fear, which will affect our health. My goodness. Andrea, I mean, Annette, excuse me. I got too many A's here today, but uh, please, the stage is yours. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jim. I am so humbled to have been asked by Speakers Pathway Coalition to just share some information that I truly, truly hope will impact lives for the better. You know, from what I'm seeing on Facebook and Messenger, it appears many people are using their quarantine time to do positive activities, to uplift their own spirits, as well as the spirits of others. There are viral Zumba classes, viral chats, playwriting competitions, and of course, here we are doing a viral event to build hope, inspiration, and support. Many people are spending time with family or getting some of those tasks and chores done that they've been putting off. I'm not really one of them. I'm still not doing my tasks and chores, but maybe you are. However, this is a perfect time for us to also focus on self-improvement and the future. Everybody knows there's an enormous amount of fear and panic. There are empty grocery shelves. There's a shortage of toilet paper, which absolutely no one seems to be able to explain. But when this hashtag quarantine and hashtag social distancing is over and the fear and panic about COVID-19 has died down, many people will still be dealing with the fears they had before this virus was even around. Fears of being alone, not being good enough, not attractive enough, not smart enough, not being liked, not being loved, not enough money, fear of illness. It's a pretty long list. There was an article in the New York Observer a few years ago that said, and I quote, fear is the new normal. The article mentioned that maybe we should learn to live with fear. Now, who does that sound good to? Some fears are very real. We do know that terrorism is real. Whether you believe it or not, there are fears about global warming. There are people with medical debt. Fear can destroy your health. And just because you're not sick doesn't mean you're healthy. You know, um, sometimes the person you never thought would get sick, I mean really sick, gets really sick. Unfortunately, so many times, one of our family or friends gets the terrible news that they have some type of dis-ease in the body. And that's exactly what it is, a state of dis-ease. And sometimes it might seem as if it was sudden, but it's really not. Remember, just because you're not sick doesn't mean you're healthy. And that's what happened in my family to two people that I love so much. Their cells and body systems were dealing with things that we didn't know about until the damage became apparent. So we hijack our bodies when they deal with fear on a constant basis. So let's spend some time talking about renewing our minds. And the first step in renewing our mind is knowing where we are right now. 
how many of your actions are a result of emotions which started as a thought. Let's look at some, just some of the signs of fear and how fear affects our bodies and some ways that we can lessen the damage. So do you make important decisions without giving enough thought to the outcome because of a fear of the unknown? So maybe you jump to the decision to delay a medical procedure or purchase a house without taking the time to analyze the facts because of fear of what might happen. Do you always see only the negative when faced with a decision to make? Your thoughts just fly out of control and that little small voice that should lead you in the right way, you can't even hear because your thoughts are drowning it out. Fear won't let you try anything new or venture into the unknown, even though you're not content where you are now. Fear stops you from making any decision at all sometimes, which of course is a decision in itself. There is nothing positive about these kinds of fear because they're not cautionary fears, like how we stop at a red light to make sure the intersection's clear before we make a right turn. Fear is about prepping our bodies for oncoming danger. So our bodies go to work releasing hormones. They speed up some systems like our heart and blood flow to muscles for quicker movement and sharper eyesight. But it slows down things like our digestive system because digesting that rice, veggie, whatever is just not important now because your life is in danger, fight or flight response. So when you speed up and slow down systems in your body over and over, it will cause damage. Know this, your brain can take short-term memory and make it a long-term memory so that you recall the situations over and over. The result, your body reacts the same way over and over. So my faith tells me that my body was not designed to carry stress and that staying healthy requires me to give my stress to God. The interesting thing is, if you take faith out of the equation, our bodies literally are physically not designed to deal with stress anyway. So when parts of our brain, mainly the hypothalamus, receives messages of fear and anxiety and other negative feelings, it completely throws the balance off, the balance that's referred to as homeostasis. In that itty bitty little part of our brain, that big job of the hypothalamus is to keep everything perfect from temperature to heart contractions and many more systems and body movements. Even medical science agrees that that gland responds when emotions are negative and a lack of balance in any one of the 10 systems in our bodies can cause stress-related conditions from cardiovascular diseases to overeating, depression, eczema, tension, headaches, back aches, and so much more. So how do we start creating hope and health and rise from the fear? A study at Harvard said that optimistic people and joy can actually prevent heart attacks by lowering the risk. Whenever you take time thinking about something, it only gets bigger and stronger in your mind. When fear and negative thought comes into your mind, remember it's something you do not want. You don't want to feel you're not good enough or that you don't deserve love. So when you hear I'm not good enough, focus on the I am, the opposite. You are good enough. You do deserve love. Train your brain to disagree with fearful thoughts because the thoughts you replace them with will also only get bigger and stronger in your mind. Next, positive thoughts create positive emotions which create positive actions. For instance, turn an I can't change jobs to a I can change jobs. And whatever fear told you you couldn't do, you can turn it around and that positive action will follow. Pull your phone out later today and take just a few minutes to jot down eight to 10 things you feel truly, truly grateful for. And then look at it every time before you pop onto Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or anything else right now, so that you feel that gratitude instead of the negativity that wants to become a part of you. Researchers at the University of Chicago recorded positive feelings translate 
to less worry and lower levels of cortisol, which is responsible for the fight or flight response. But when we have good feelings, it just continues to do its regular job. Next, try and expect your glass to be half full instead of half empty. And start thinking positive so you can create more for your future. Laugh, laugh a lot. Find funny movies that you wanna take time to watch. Laughter is so good for the soul and it produces chemicals that reduce pain and create a general sense of well-being. Negative thoughts are toxic, but they actually create toxins in our body. Our bodies are running hijacked right now. And we already have about 26 sextillion free radicals running around in our body. And it takes millions of antioxidants to neutralize those free radicals. So think about the 10 systems in your body as God's pharmacy. They create chemicals based on your emotions, which come from your thoughts, which will turn into actions. You know, Nelson Mandela said, your choices reflect your hopes, not your fears. Don, Jim, thank you again so much. It's been an absolute privilege to be here and to have the opportunity to share information with people that hopefully will have an impact on their lives. Wow, Annette, thank you so very much. And looking at you there on the screen and all, I've got to ask you, Faith Dominator, is that who you are? You got that on That's your shirt? That's who I Please. am. Absolutely, I dominate by faith. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I love your message because fear has is the perfect thing to have in your life if you want to rob yourself of love and the true energy of life. Am I correct on that? Ab absolutely correct. We want abundant life. That's what we want. You bet. And fear is just a, it just, it just paralyzes you. It really does. And does. I want to thank you for your wonderful, inspiring message. And it's very nice to meet you virtually uh, on, on stage here by the camera. And I'm mean, just so glad that you raised your hand too and says, hey, I want to share my message and I want to reach out and touch some people and I want to change their life. And I know your message has been very well received by the people that saw us live today and especially the ones that will be watching us on video. It's amazing how, how we can reach out and touch one life. And, you know, you look at this current day fire virus we got, look how, how it started in a small area and it's just exploded all over the, the globe. Yes. And just in a positive way, how you can take some of the things that you talked about and being positive and helping people overcome their fears, how that can really just, you know, really spread. And that's what we need in this day and time. So on, the, on that note, I'll simply say, thank you so very, very much. We appreciate you. And I love that faith dominator. You, you, my kind of girl, you know, <laughs> <laughs> thank hope you, you have a wonderful and blessed day. And thank you again. We'll talk with you later. Thank bye -bye. you. Bye-bye. Let me, uh, Stop the video here and uh, just so glad to, to have these wonderful ladies here on the, on the show today. I mean, my goodness, Annette Gale, we just heard from, and before that, Andrea Roberts, and then Amber Griffiths. Uh, this message that we've uh, put together on today's program, this day two, you can get the uh, replays of it. Go to Speakers Pathway Coalition on Facebook page, Speakers Pathway Coalition. And we're the ones that, uh, in fact, the show is sponsored by Speakers Pathway Coalition. And there's one other complimentary gift I would like to share with you that we have there that's free. It comes from one of our executive training directors, Tamara Hunter. She is the creator and founder of uh, Chemo Buddies for Life. She's a cancer su survivor. And she's got a wonderful gift. She offers her celebration journal for folks suffering from cancer or any other disease. So if you know someone that's suffering from a life-threatening disease, please go to speakerspathway.com. Click on the complimentary gifts. Look for Tamara's picture. And we will just, you know, and just share it with others. And like I say, it's free of charge. And Network Together, I want to mention those folks before we go. Uh, they're a bus they build business and networking, networking relationships with entrepreneurs in the community. 
and they have virtual stages right now to find out more about them and what they're doing because you may want to be able to be able to create a community and and get your uh, virtual stage going there and where you live go to ntevents.net again i'm jim grant on behalf of all the folks uh, behind the scenes and we want to personally thank you for being with us today. We sincerely hope that the guests have gave you some great inspiring messages. And if they have, and I know they have, please share them with others. Have a wonderful day. We'll be back with day number three tomorrow. Same time, same place. We'll see you then. Bye-bye.